Okay, so here we are. I have Pathway Tools version 11.5. Keep in mind that if it's been a while since this webinar was made and you're looking at it, you may have a more recent version with additional capabilities. I have the Windows version that I'm running here, and I have the what we call the NavEd Path Tier 1, Tier 2, which is a very complex way of saying that my version has the navigator, has the editing function, and has pathologic. So I can actually make new databases, which is what I'm going to do today. And I have both the Tier 1 and Tier 2 databases. So once again, our Tier 1 databases are EcoPsych and MetaPsych, which MetaPsych is our big resource that lets us do the kind of predictions we do to make a database. And then I have a bunch of other databases that I won't actually be using, because of course what I'm doing today is making my own new database. So to get started making our own database, let's go to Tools and click on Pathologic. And that pulls up this Pathologic window that tells us that we don't have an organism selected and that there's nothing going on. With that in mind, let's go over to Organism, Create New. And we get this window. Okay, so what do we absolutely need to put in? Well, we need an organism or project ID. And we're looking at Coxiella burnettii, so let's go with cburn as our project ID. We can have a version, in this case it is 1.0 by default because we started. You'll notice it named it Project ID Psych for Seaburn Psych. Full species name, Coxiella burnettii. And again, it conveniently abbreviates that in the appropriate fashion. And then the strain, if we want to, this is actually entirely optional. Uh, but we're going to put it in Dugway 7E912. As I said, rolls right off the tongue. You can put in the taxon ID. Something that is less optional is to put in the phylogenetic classification. You don't have to do it, but it will help with avoiding certain weird predictions that we might want to avoid. So let's go down here, click down, and we're looking at a proteobacteria. So we'll click on that. You can see we have a whole bunch of options. Then we have the codon table. In this case, we're going to go with the uh, let's go with the bacterial codon table, which is the same as standard except for alternate initiation codons. But we have mitochondrial tables, we have lots of tables. Now, here's just lots of additional space to put stuff in. We can have institution types, we can have citations up top if you have a publication with the sequencing in it and you want that to be a top citation. We have a footer citation that will go on each web page. You know, we do this on our database. You can also do the storage type. File or Oracle or My, MySQL uh, database, we're going to stick with File for this example, and there's a good chance that's what you'll be doing when you do this yourself. Okay, so we've put in the basic information we need. We just scroll down here and say OK. Now, this is talking to the SRI server to get a unique ID for this. As you can see, today we were able to talk to our server, which is good, given that I'm sitting very near the servers. Um, but on the chance that you're not connected that day, we're not connected that day, it'll go ahead and assign you your own ID and not worry about it. We just like to assign unique IDs because later you might want to upload it to our registry and then it'd be good if there were no overlap, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so what it's done is it's gone through and generated what we'd call the skeleton of a pathway genome database. Uh, it has a bunch of the hierarchies, it has all the things you're going to layer the data onto. And at this point you don't need to worry about that. And what you actually need, and it will tell you what you need, you need the sequence file or files, you need the annotation file or files, and you need a file geneticelements.dat in the database directory that is now made in your ptools local folder. And so let's start with downloading the sequence files that we need and the GenBank files. Nah. So we're going to start by downloading the GenBank and FASTA files that we need to make this database. So let's skip back over to the NCBI site. Once again, here we are in the NCBI site. I am just going to go through and click through on the RefSeq link.
And this brings up the RefSeq page. I'm going to scroll down for a moment because I want to show you one thing that's important, which is that the topology here is circular. This will matter because we're actually going to ask you a little bit later when we edit the genetic elements file whether your chromosomes and things are circular or linear, which just has to do with how we represent them mainly and you know, will affect a few other things. And here I'm going to click through to the GenBank FTP. And here we are on the FTP directory for Coxiella, Bernettii, Dugway, etc., etc. The organism that we're intent on making a database for. This can look a little bit confusing, but remember, you only have to look for two files per genetic element, and right now we're looking for two genetic elements, one chromosome, one plasmid. And just scrolling down from the top, the only two suffixes we care about are .fna and .gbk. .fna is the FASTA file, .gbk is the GenBank file. And you can see here we have a big GenBank file, 4.7-ish megs, and we have a little GenBank file. You can guess we have the chromosome and the plasmid there. You may occasionally need to open these files to figure out which is which, or if you have an organism with maybe three plasmids. Uh, these directories are not always as clear as they could be. Okay, so let's just start downloading and saving files. So we'll just start saving the files we need one by one into the appropriate directory. Starting with the FASTA file for the whole genome. So I'm just going to right click on that, save link as. Okay, back up to the desktop for me, computer, C, documents and settings your username, and this is all on a Windows machine, this may work differently for you. Uh, you'll just want to look at where it told you it put the appropriate folder, and it told you that back on the pathologic page that we started on. I'm going to application data, ptools local, pgdbs for pathway genome databases, user, C burn psych. Then 1.0 input. Okay, now here is the folder where we're dumping the four files that we need. You can see already in there we have an organism.dat file, an organism init.dat. We're not going to mess with either of those, and a sample genetic cell genetic elements dat file, which we will be editing once we finish downloading all this stuff. Now you could just save this thing with its given name from NCBI, but I find that really confusing. So I recommend changing it. So we'll just call this chrome1.fna because it is the first, and in this case only, chromosome. Okay, so we have our first FASTA file ready. Let's get the GenBank file for the genome. Again, I'm going to call it chrome1.gbk. You can see the FNA is there. Now we have the plasmid. And we'll call this plasmid1.fna. That was fast because it's tiny. And let's get the GenBank file here. plasmid1.gbk. Sounds good. Done. Also very fast. Okay, so we're done downloading what we needed from NCBI. We have a GenBank and a FASTA file for both the chromosome and the one plasmid that Coxiella bernadii, this strain anyway, contains.